Hi again. Okay, so this time we're looking at the cosine rule. The cosine rule, after we've already looked at the sine rule, which said that sine of any angle divided by its opposite side length is equal to sine of any other angle divided by its opposite side length. So here we, you can see that if we want to use this, we need pairs. We need an angle and its opposite pair and we need another angle and its opposite pair. So one of these are allowed to be unknown, the other three must be known. Okay, so let's imagine I have a triangle and this is what I know about my triangle. I know that's A, B and C and in A, B and C I know angle B, I know side length A, and I know side length C. So will we be able to use the sine rule? Well, if I have side length A, okay, let's say I'm trying to calculate B here, okay, because I have this angle, I can only use this angle in relationship with its opposite side. So can I calculate B? Well, I have an opposite pair. Here's an opposite pair, the angle and its opposite side, where this one will be the unknown. So I need another ang uh, side and its opposite angle. And here you can see, yes, I've got two sides, side C and side A, but I have neither of the angles. Okay, these ones are still unknown. And I can't even use um, the interior angles add up to 180 because I need at least one of them to do that. So here you can see in this case actually what we have is an angle and the two or actually two sides and it's inclusive angle. The angle made by those two sides and when I have that two sides and its inclusive angle, the sine rule is absolutely useless. It can't be used at all. Okay, so what are we going to use here? We're going to use the cosine rule. Now let's just quickly look at the cosine ratio first of all. So here we have a right angle triangle. Remember cosine, the, the uh, sine cos and tan ratios can only be used in 90 degree triangles. So cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, so there's the hypotenuse. So you see the first thing that we need is an angle. We need one angle and that angle must be 90 degrees. We need its opposite side length which is the hypotenuse. Okay, and if we call this a B and C, we see we need the hypotenuse. Is the hypotenuse. And then we need another angle, okay, that is theta in this case. And we need its adjacent side length, which in this case is A. So in other words, here we have that cos of angle B is equal to A over C. Okay, adjacent over the hypotenuse and this we can only use when we have another angle the 90 degree um, angle there. Another thing that we are going to use for the cosine rule which no, is not so apparent but it actually comes from the fact that we have the 90 degree angle. If we have the 90 degree angle then we know we can also find this side length, side length B. Because in this case, to find B, if I have those two sides already, I can use Pythagoras. Pythagoras says that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared. So in other words, B squared will be equal to my hypotenuse squared minus the adjacent squared. Okay, so in this case, um, or in, in developing the cosine rule, we are going to use both this fact and that fact. So let's jump into it. So remember what we have now, a triangle where we can't use the sine rule. Here's a triangle where I can't use the sine rule and in this triangle, sorry before I drop down the height, in this triangle I have B, uh, A, B and C. The information that I've been given is 
side length B I've been given angle A and angle C so look how I have two side length and the inclusive angle the l angle that those two side lengths make and what I'm trying to find is this opposite side I'm trying to find that one so let's put that one in green that is what I'm trying to find now in order to do that I'm gonna to have to change my triangle into two right angled triangles so I'm dropping down an imaginary line so you have to keep in mind the whole time that H which is now going to be this height is imaginary we don't know what H is really we can go and work it out but we're not given H also what we're going to need to do is since we have a we are going to also and let me not put it there we're going to call this side length a1 and that side length a2 now a1 and a2 is not equal necessary they're not they're not the same distances necessarily but what we do know is that a1 plus a2 is equal to a they add up to give me the length that I have Okay, so if I get the one, I can go find the other one. Okay, so that is going to be our aim, is we are going to try and write B in terms of, in, of the imaginary information. Okay, because as you can see in this triangle, B can be written in terms of H and A squared, because it's the hypotenuse. So from here we can say, okay, B squared is equal to, now we're using imaginary figures that's not really in the original sketch h squared plus a2 squared but we don't want these imaginary ones so we need to go and replace the imaginary with what we already have okay so how are we going to replace a2 well a2 has a relationship with a1 what's that relationship well a2 plus a1 gives me a and a we have okay so a we can put in a yeah, that is something that we do have so what we can do in our next step is say okay well we can say h squared plus and instead of a squared um, a2 squared we can say that's a squared if I solve a a2 is equal to a minus a squared uh, sorry a1 so I can replace a2 with a minus a1 okay so I'm keeping the imaginary things in this light blue color so that in the end we must get rid of all those light blue colors okay so so far we already have B in terms of something at least now we can simplify that a little bit okay we can simplify this this is a squared plus if I multiply these two brackets out that's writing it out like this and uh, then I see okay so a times a is a squared that I do have then I have minus a times a1 and another a times a1 so I've got negative 2a and I still have a1 as unknown and then minus a1 minus a1 gives me plus a1 squared okay so here you can see I've got a little bit more work to do I've got something known already but there's still two imaginary things that I need to go and replace let's look at a1 how can I replace a1 so if we look at a1 a1 finds itself in this triangle in that triangle I shouldn't use green green is for our uh, value that we're trying to calculate let's use yellow a1 finds itself in this yellow triangle and in this yellow triangle we have C the hypotenuse of the yellow triangle and we have angle B and A1 that we're trying to calculate would be the adjacent side of this so what I what I can say here is that okay cos of B is known is equal to adjacent which is a1 over hypotenuse which is C so I've got a1 over C so what I'm trying to do is replace this a1 in here with 
a different formula and that's what I have here so I'm going to write it as a1 so what am I doing I'm multiplying both sides with C okay I'm multiplying both sides with C and C cancels on the right hand side so a1 is equal to C times cos of angle B now that's what I can do I can now go and replace a1 and a1 with this it's known okay C is known and angle B is known should I put angle B as well in purple okay so what do I have well I still have that H is unknown I've not worked on H yet okay however I know a squared minus 2a is that value there the whole length there that's known okay a1 we've now calculated to be or we can replace it with c cos of beta c uh, not beta cos of angle b okay plus and then we have an a1 squared right here now i'm going to i'm not going to replace this a1 squared at this point and you'll see why not so here's one little trick I'm not going to replace that one yet and I'll show you why look what we have here I've got h squared plus a1 squared plus and this is now so that's the the two things that I that's still imaginary that I don't want in there yet so here I've got a c cos of angle B. So why didn't I want to replace that? Well, look at this. H squared plus A1 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay. In other words, another thing I can see here is that C squared is equal to H squared, the opposite, plus the adjacent which is a 1 squared and that's all that's all I can replace this whole thing in one go with the following c squared plus a squared minus 2 a c cos b now this one is quite a bit more tricky than the sign rule but in the end this is what I have and I don't simplify it I keep it as B squared that's what we have been working on the whole time let's keep it in green okay I've got B squared is the value I'm trying to calculate is equal to and I'm just going to write this in alphabetic order a squared plus C squared minus 2 a C cos of angle B this is the information that I had if you look at the original sketch I had C okay I suppose I should stick to my colors I've got C and A the two sides that made angle B which is the other angle I have so I've got C I've got A I've got A I've got C and I've got angle B so I've got everything to calculate B squared now as soon as I get the answer here I'm going to take the square root of that answer to get my final length for B but for the cosine rule we're going to going to keep it like this and you'll see it looks very much like the uh, Pythagorean theorem with this extra bit here at the end so it's almost like Pythagoras modified okay but but that is the cosine rule now look carefully let's investigate here what we have we have three sides in this formula we have three sides one two three sides and one angle now what is the relationship of that one angle to the three sides well the angle that I have here is the opposite angle to the side length that's on the left hand side of my equation now if I made all of this equal to zero you'd see that there's a difference between this that and that um, position in here so we actually have a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos angle b minus b squared in other words uh, you can see here that that this 
this term is a little bit different than these two terms. It's also a side, but it's a little bit different in that it has the negative if it's on the right-hand side of the equation. But that's important because that side length, these two are opposite pairs. Okay, they are opposite pairs. Okay, so looking at this, let's say I, I want to calculate... I want to calculate a side length using the cosine rule. What do I need? If I want to calculate a side length B, one thing that I'm going to need is its opposite angle. As you can see here, we wanted to calculate B and we used the angle that we were given where this was this opposite side length. So if I have the opposite uh, angle. That's what I'm going to need. Okay, And then I'm also going to need the other two sides. The other two sides. Okay. If I wanted to calculate an angle Okay, now there's only one angle in here, and that is angle B. Then I'm going to need all three side lengths. So if I want to calculate an angle using the cosine rule, I'm going to need all three side lengths. Okay, and then we just have to keep in mind that the opposite side length belongs on the opposite side. Okay, Does that make sense? Here we have the opposite B is opposite angle B and it's on the opposite side of the equation. So when we substitute to solve an angle using the cosine rule we use all three side lengths and the only condition is that this that the side length that is opposite is the one that gets substituted on this side or if we use this equation it's the one that gets the negative okay i think that's as much as i'm going to say on uh, the cosine rule uh, we're going to look at some examples in the next couple of videos see you there.